Hi there, I'm Ryan Ellis and I'm doing a video project on all that I've learned by 28. Now, in step 9 of the 10 step process of building a company from startup to its first million dollars in sales, I'm going to be talking about building a team. Now, you've spent months getting your business to the point just to be ready to make the first sale. You developed your business idea, closed on deals with suppliers, ordered your inventory of products, written your business plan, incorporated, and raised the money you needed to get started. But before you can truly begin to grow quickly, you'll have to build your team and your infrastructure and put a few systems in place. So now it's time to build your team. And you really want to build your team as soon as you can. If you never hire anyone, you'll be doing all the work yourself. And if you're doing all the work yourself, you're really just building a job for yourself rather than building a business, a company that can operate independently, with, independently of you and without you if needed. I remember the story when I was 14 of working for Lois, the flight attendant who would bring back pearls on her international trips to China. She started selling them to her friends, eventually building a business uh, called Freshwater Pearls around this, around this business and created a website and then created some systems to begin selling online. But she did all the work herself. She never was able to hire her first employees and ultimately the business shut down because she just got tired of doing all the work. I learned at that age, back of, at 14, back in 1998, that if you really want to build a scalable business, you have to build a business that has a team. And ideally, a team that can execute well and in many cases is much more competent than you are in their particular areas. So let me share some of my favorite interview questions to ask as you talk about bringing on some of your first employees. So questions I might ask in an interview of a potential employee is, what are you passionate about? Tell me about some of the experiences you've had in your life that have been difficult or challenging. What change do you want to make, the world, make in the world in your lifetime? If you met an alien, how would you describe yourself to that uh, being? Tell me about your failures. Tell me about the goals you have. And what I find is that if someone is not passionate about the change they want to make in their world, they're often not going to be a great team member. I want to find people who are passionate about making the change in the world and using their life to make that change that is the same change that we want to make as a company through our mission. If you're going to create a team full of passionate individuals who want to together achieve something that makes a difference in the world, you're going to have a much more higher chance of success. Let's talk about how to recruit. So you could recruit via existing team members and their friends and their referral network. You could recruit via competitors. You could go to online job posting boards like Dice or Monster or Career Builder or services like LinkedIn and the ladders. Look at something called TechCrunch Jobs. You could also go to your investors' contacts and relationships and find ways to get referrals in from people who are your advisors and mentors. You could also pay a corporate recruiter, uh, although often that's pretty expensive and out of reach for most startups. And you can work to get press about your product or your company that can help you reach more people and create hundreds of applicants coming into your pool. Oftentimes, the best team members are the ones who are currently employed. Now, from time to time, <coughs> excuse me, from time to time, certainly people will be unemployed that are great quality candidates. However, oftentimes, if you want to get people at the top of their game, at the top of their field, you're going to have to recruit them directly from another position. So let's talk a little bit about your C-level team, your CEO, CFO, CTO, your chief technology and finance officer, your chief operations officer, your head of support, your head of sales, the people that report up to you as CEO or your CEO if you've chosen to be chairman or another role. You really need to spend particular time and effort recruiting your C-level team because effectively they are the leaders of your company that everyone else in your team interacts with and they set the stage for the culture for everyone. And so you really want your C-level executives to be passionate about the change that you're passionate about making. You also want to spend extra time to make sure they're really competent individuals who are great leaders and great managers. And so, jokingly saying, you really want your team to be made up of Jedis, people who are compassionate, highly competent, and working hard to make a positive difference in the world. And when you recruit that team together, which might just be whomever you can attract in the beginning of your startup, but later as you have capital and recognition can really be a truly high quality team. You want to be able to think about how you can provide goals to your team that motivate them, encourage them, and are also achievable. You want to make your goals quantitative, numerically driven, and you want to give your, give your team frequent feedback. And at the end of the day, if someone isn't working out in your team, in other words, their skills aren't up for the job, 
or if they're just not doing a job as well as you need, let them go. Free them up to do something they are good at. Now, do it with compassion and find a way to enable them to find their next position. And certainly don't surprise them. Give them feedback along the way through frequent job performance appraisals and, it, and certainly immediate feedback anytime you notice something that isn't quite up to what you're looking for. But at the end of the day, you need to have a team of A players who are passionate about making a difference in the world. And you need to focus immediately, once you, as soon as you can afford it, on building a great team. Thanks for watching this section on team building.